You clicked on this video because you spend a lot of time on all those small details in your design file. But when you first opened it in Bravo Vision, it didn't quite look as you expected. That's perfectly okay, because in this video, I'm going to go through some of the visual problems that you might have with your app, and we're going to have a look at a way how to solve those. It doesn't make sense watching the whole video. So here is a little overview over all the topics that we're going to talk about, and then you can just choose your issue and find the solution there. Additionally, all the issues will be linked in the description, so you can just skip to the timestamp that's interesting to you. I'm going to divide this video in two sections where we usually get a lot of questions about. The first one being responsiveness or the structure of the app. So basically, when you have padding issues or some things are not aligned the way you expect them to be. The second part will be text. We're going to go over things like fonts, resizing issues, or the text not being expanded as you expected. At the end, we're going to have a look at some more specific problems, like for example, images, animations, or if not the right screen is displayed in your app. If you weren't able to resolve your problem by then, we're going to have a look at some general tips. We're going to start off with the responsiveness issues. It might look good on your phone, but when you checked it on a friend's phone, your app looked different. So why is that? Bravo calculates the position of all your elements inside of the screen. You can basically think of it as having your screen and then adapting that to all other different aspect ratios and screen sizes. I recommend starting with the template of a big phone. For example, the iPhone 11 Pro Max. That way, Bravo just has to downsize your design to make it look good on other phones. If you find that your design has a lot of white space at the bottom of it, it's useful to make the screen shorter. When we do that here in Figma, we're also going to check that the containers are smaller than the phone screen. A similar thing goes for all padding issues, so when you have a lot of white space around the elements. Check that the containers have the right size, because the space in here will be then later calculated into the padding. If this doesn't solve your problem, you might have the wrong structure with your containers. We're going to have a look at that now. The wrong structure of elements could be also shown through an offset to one side. Make sure to apply all the rules when it comes to creating your frames and containers. The most common mistakes that you can check for are either the frame is outside of the screen, the frames don't have the full width, or the frames are not touching or even overlapping. If you need a refresher on containers and frames, I've linked a video for that down below. Even displaying text in your app can be tricky sometimes. If you find your text being cut at some point, just give it some air to breathe. In context, that looks like this. This is our text and we now want to give it some more space inside of that text box. If the font size changes or you have a dynamic content which creates a line break, the text has still space inside of this text box. If the text goes outside of this text box or partially outside of it, it's not going to be displayed anymore. This could make it look like this. I myself like to give it some room on all sides, even if I know it's just one line. And then I align it to the center, which also makes it look great on buttons. You realize that your flexo tag isn't working if you have a very long text, which is fetched from an API and the text box should expand. So all of the text is displayed, but it isn't. Here's how to fix that. The first thing that you should check is that you apply the flexo tag to the text and not the container. The size of the container follows the size of the text with the flexo tag and not the other way around. So you want your text box to be expanded and not just the container. Secondly, the text box with your flexo tag needs to be the bottommost element in that container. In an example, that would mean that this wouldn't be working because we have the text box here and then there's another element below that text box. To make that work, we would then create a new container around that element and leave the text as the bottommost element of this initial container. That way, the text and with it, the container expands downwards, pushing the other container with this element down as well. If you need a refresher on how to use the flexo tag with some more examples, 
then check out the video in the description. Maybe you have the opposite problem. Your flexo tag is working, but you have some white space below the text, which shouldn't be there. This can be solved pretty easily by making the text box smaller, like this. The flexo tag only expands the text box. If the dynamic text from your API is actually smaller than the initial text box that you applied the flexo tag to, this text box doesn't get smaller. A safe way to go would be to make the text box small, so that only one line fits in it. If the text then actually is longer than that, it will expand downwards. But you won't have this white space of the text box still expecting some text, but not getting it from the API. You may find your text being resized differently than you expected. The font size is calculated by the screen aspect ratio. So a smaller screen will have a smaller font and a bigger screen will have the bigger font size. If you want to keep that ratio because you, for example, created a pixel perfect design, there's a little trick that can help you with that. Note that this only works with static text and it won't be reversible, so be careful with it. We're going to convert the text to a vector graphic. To do that, select your text, right click and then click flatten. This converts the text to a vector graphic. At this point, Figma doesn't see it as text anymore. So when you double click, you can't edit or change the properties of the text. When this is handled as an SVG by Bravo, it resizes it to always have the same aspect ratio. Another thing that can happen to text is that you get these small boxes or other icons that indicate that this symbol is not supported by your font. This often happens with the Unicode symbols and the only way to fix it is to choose a different font. Try out one of the default fonts and see if that fixes your problem. Your app relies on images to be shown, but they're only displayed after a couple of seconds which is a really long time and hurts the user experience. The reason for that is that the images are too big and it takes too much time to load them. This is not a problem with Bravo exactly. The way to fix it is to compress your images. There are a couple of free and paid image optimization services out there in the internet. Choose one you like, upload your files and then download the compressed version. When you check the file sizes of these two images, you can see that this one is way smaller, which makes it load faster in your app. You don't even have to have the best image quality on your app, because it will only be displayed on a small screen. But still, these companies pride themselves in not losing any quality, so you have nothing to worry about. After that, just upload it back to your backend provider. You created some nice animations inside of XD or Figma, but they're not showing inside of Bravo Vision. The reason for that is that the animations inside of these tools are not supported by their API. This way, Bravo is unable to import them. Don't worry, you can still add animations using the Bravo tags. You can find a list of all animation tags in the tags master list. And also there are some videos linked down below where those animations are explained in detail. If none of these solutions helped you, here are some general tips to troubleshoot. The first one sounds obvious, but check your spelling. You might have spelled one of the tags wrong. This also counts for the set name that you chose for all your state pages. Make sure they all have the same name as the default page. Secondly, make sure that everything is inside of a frame. The Bravo error messages will help you with that. That brings me to the next point. Read the Bravo error messages. They're not just there for fun and for you to ignore them. And they often contain helpful information. If you get one of those messages and don't understand what they mean, get in contact with the support or ask in the community forum. If a tag is not working as expected, you can also check if it's in the correct level. Just pull up the Bravo tags master list and compare where you put it and where it should go. This brings us to the end of this video and I hope you were able to troubleshoot all of your issues. If you face an issue that wasn't in this list, make sure to drop it in the comments so I can respond with another video. But if I was actually able to help you, I would be happy if you considered liking this video or even subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching Build It With Jonas and I'll see you for a new episode next Tuesday.